This is Brad Whitehouse for the Alumni Association of the University of Michigan. The Stearns Collection of Musical Instruments holds over 2,500 pieces of historical and contemporary musical instruments and is one of the largest accumulations of such artifacts housed in a North American university. The director of the collection, Stephen Ball, offered to take me and our videographer on an impromptu tour of this collection for a feature article in Michigan Alumnus Magazine. He suggested that we meet him at the Moore Building on North Campus to see part of the 1% of the collection that is actually on display. He showed us some very interesting artifacts, including one of the first Indonesian gamelans ever imported to the United States, a display of stringed instruments from around the world, some very unique looking horns, and a very impressive organ. So I don't know if you noticed, but I have maybe about um, less than a quarter of the organ on. And to my ears, anything more would be deafening. <laughs> OK, now for the real party. Um, <laughs> OK, now you guys know how to get to Argus. We then followed Stephen across town to the old Argus II building for a tour of what he calls the vault. It's a basement storage facility that houses 99% of the collection and its most valuable artifacts. I didn't know what to expect, but I soon realized why the vault is the perfect name for this amazing collection's current home. Okay. Now, after you fasten your seat belts, we'll be passing the drink cart up the aisle. So, <laughs> it's making more noise than usual, actually. <laughs> I'll try and keep my evil laugh down. Do come in. So make yourselves at home, okay. insofar as that's possible. And actually, everything is not here. There's, this is most of it. And you'll see it's pretty densely packed. Uh, let's just go through and go for a little walk. So things are grouped according to class to some extent, and also to size. So, for example, this whole pile here, this is all one instrument. This was a donation to us from Pinellas Park, Florida. It's a, it's a, a, a Robert Morton feeder organ. I mean, every case here is, you can just see every case is full to overflowing with instruments. And they range from the normal to the incredibly obscure. Like, for instance, uh, this instrument is called a hurdy-gurdy. Now, people think of a hurdy-gurdy sometimes as, a, it was, as that, which is a barrel piano or a crank organ, but this is an actual hurdy-gurdy. So we have several examples of these here, but this is unusual because it's the smallest of them. They sound like little bagpipes, actually. This is a German instrument by Klotz. It was made in 1721. It's a viola. This is one of the, the finest uh, pin cylinder boxes that was ever made. Um, as you can see, there's some restoration work needed. The cracks here in the bed plate are a, re are a problem that are the result of lack of humidity control and lack of temperature control here, as is some of the damage here. Um, despite that, the instrument plays and it's quite magnificent. It's probably one of the finest cylinder boxes ever made. I'm just trying to restrict myself to some of the more interesting instruments, but the problem is they're all interesting. Some of, this, some of it's what's really interesting is also really buried, so it's really hard to know where to, where to dig. This is one of the earliest preserved trumpets in, that exists from Western Europe. The story goes that this was found in the mud at the bottom of the Thames. It's a herald's trumpet. I think it's the only example of a 14th century trumpet known to exist anywhere. This is, this is the famous theremin from the Stearns collection. And this is, this is the, the very theremin which was used in the Green Hornet. So this was at WXYZ here in Detroit in the Fisher Building. That's the Green Hornet sound. It's surprisingly soft. Where is that letter?
excuse me while I rummage about. I have, ah oh yes, here it is. Here is Frederick Stearns' original letter of gift. And in it, he says, if all the regents of the university will agree to provide a fireproof hall or room where the collection could be suitably installed, I should be inclined to make a gift of the collection to the university. And probably I would agree also to do uh, the, the labeling, installing and showcasing at my own expense. Under no circumstances, whatever, however, would I turn over the collection to the university except on the understanding that it should be immediately housed and installed. I should not consent to its being packed away for some future regent to, more, to, to suit themselves or be neglected entirely. And this is dated the 15th of September, 1897. I wish to honor uh, Frederick Stearns' original request. That's my mission here. You should know in having seen these images, these are things few people, uh, even those intimately acquainted with the university, have set eyes on. The University of Michigan is the only major university to possess such a diverse collection of instruments. It's the only truly anthropological 19th century collection. It's also one of the world's largest, so I encourage you to, in every way, be involved, be active, be interested, and become a friend of the Stearns Collection.